Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Vegetative propagation by stems. Now in some plants again stems can be modified into many different types of structures and each of these structures can produce new plants. So one such modification of stem is a runner. Runner means somebody who is running. So in some plants the stems normally when you talk about the stem we expect that the stem will grow in the upward direction. Correct? That's what we expect in normal plants. But there are certain plants where stems grow horizontally above the ground. When I say horizontally, that is basically this direction. That sounds little strange, right? But yes, that happens in a lot of plants. So in these type of plants, for example, grass, strawberry, these are examples of such plants where you actually see the stem running horizontally and above the ground. So we will look at the example, I will look at the picture. So you see here, this is the stem, the green colored structure which you see here, that stem. And you see the stem is growing horizontally. And at each point, after a certain interval of time, there is a point which these points are called nodes. At these points, birds develop. So there are birds at these points. So these points are called nodes and at nodes there are birds. So at each node there are birds. Uh, roots are formed, new stems are formed and that's how you see new plants are actually being formed. So this is an example of runner. Why is it called runner? Because the stem is running along the surface of the earth. Now similarly in case of strawberry plant also if you see this is how the stem runs. Instead of running exactly on the ground it's like little bit above the ground and then again it touches the ground at a point. So these points are called nodes. In fact, due to this spe uh, special behavior of the stems in strawberry plant, this type of stem is also known as stolone. So this is a special name which is given to the runner of strawberry plant. So this is the scenario of strawberry plant and the first one which I drew is, could be the example of any runner, maybe grass. So basically these buds give rise to new plants. So the next type of modification of stems are the underground stems. Now in the previous slide we saw that some stems they act as runners that is they run horizontally and at certain points they give rise to new roots and new shoots and that's how they give rise to new plants. In this case we will see that there are certain types of stems which are instead of being present above the ground which is our normal expectation that roots will, below the, roots will be below the ground and stems will be above the ground. But there are certain types of stems which are modified to structures which are present below the ground and these are termed as underground stems. Now let us look at some examples of plants where underground stems are found. One such very common example is the potato. Now in potato you would have, if, if you have ever observed a potato closely, you would have seen eyes of the potato. Some structures where which which are very I mean you know uh, noticeable. So these kind of structures, so some blackish spots, this kind of things. So which are also called as the eyes of potato. They are called eyes of potato, but actually they are the buds. So these are actually often called as eyes of potato, but actually they are buds. And these buds under favorable conditions give rise to aerial shoots and that is how a new plant is formed. So basically this potato is a, a fleshy underground storage structure or you can say that it is an enlarged part of the stem. So you see quite swollen in structure. So the potato which we eat that is nothing but the stem of that plant. So it is the enlarged part of the stem. So, because of this structure, this is often termed as tuberous. These are these type of stems which are fleshy, which help in storage of food present underground, they are called tubers. So, this is termed as tuber of potato. So, this is one example where we see that stems are present underground and stems are capable of giving rise to new plants. As you can see here, so this is an example where you see that a new plant is gradually arising from those small buds. But this will happen only under favorable conditions. So, this is one example. Let us look at another example where underground stems give rise to new plants. 
So that is onion. So in case of onion, the structure like how we call it tuber of potato, similarly this is known as the bulb of onion. So what happens in case of onion? So onion has short underground vertical shoot with thickened leaves. So if you have, if again you closely observe an onion, you will see that a lot of leaf-like structures are present around it. So it is something like a layer of leaf, again inside that another layer of leaf. So that's how the structure is arranged. So these leaves which you see outside, these are called the scale leaves of onion. And this entire structure is called bulb. Now here you see some structures on this side. So this, this base of the onion is termed as the disc of onion and just above the base you have some structures which are called as the axillary bud of onion. So these are the axillary buds. Now how does it give rise to a new plant? So roots emerge from the underside of the stem. So this part is basically a stem. So the bulb which we are talking about, this entire part is the bulb. So and this bulb is nothing but a modified stem which is again used for food storage and this is also found underground. But at the base of the bulb, so this is the base of the bulb, from this emerges the roots. So these are the roots of the onion. So a modified stem forms the base of the bulb. So if you look, you can see here, so this is also a modified stem. So this way in case of onion also we see that the onion which we actually eat that is nothing but a modified part of stem and it can give rise to new roots and here you can see it can give rise to new shoots above. So in case you want to experiment it out on your own what you can do is take an onion keep it for a long time okay and what do you see? I mean, even if you do not put it under the ground, under the soil and all, just keep it like that in your house for quite a few days. And what do you see? You tend to see some green shoots like shoot like structures coming up from here. Correct? And here you can see some thin hair like root like structures. So this will tell you that yes, roots start growing from the base and the shoots develop from the terminal at the other end of the bulb. Now when you put it under the soil, so obviously the growth is better. So this is how in case of onion also we have underground stems. So not only these, there are other plants, for example ginger is another example where modified stem is found under the ground and the modified stem is used for food storage and it can also give rise and it also has buds which can give rise to new plants. So however we will not get into the detail of all the examples. So this was just to tell you that how certain stems which might not look like a stem but basically they are a part of modified stem. So we saw that how vegetative propagation can happen by roots, by stem. So now is the turn to see how it can happen by leaves. So all these structures which help in vegetative propagation, whether you talk about the tuber of potato, you talk about the bulb of onion, these are all termed as vegetative propagules because they help in vegetative propagation. Okay, so let's now talk about leaves. Now, this is something which is not very common. It is not very commonly seen in plants, but yes, there are certain plants where birds are formed along the leaf margins, which later give rise to a new plant. This is truly little uncommon. However, I'll give you an example of a plant and that is bryophyllum. So this is one type of plant which is also known as, now as I said, since this is not very common, so since in this plant we see this, therefore it is called miracle leaf plant. So though it is not a miracle, but since this type of phenomenon is not seen in leaves of all other plants, that is why it is termed the miracle leaf plant. So what happens exactly is, just look at this. So this is the leaf margin, the boundary of the leaf. So the, on the boundary of the leaf are present the birds. And wherever you have birds, the birds under favorable conditions can give rise to new plants. So on the leaf notches, birds are formed and 
sometimes by wind or uh, by some external agent these birds fall into the soil now when they fall into the soil they give rise to new plants new separate plants in fact they might get carried away from one place to another let's say this is a bud and this bud falls to, uh, to the ground maybe by wind and then it gets carried away from that place to some other place by some animal so there it grows into a new plant so basically from one plant it can also get the birds can also get transported to other parts and then they can give rise to new plants so this is called vegetative propagation by leaves thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again